Good morning. This is Bill from Auto House of Naples on an increasingly pleasant Florida Monday. I have to admit, it's getting better. Uh, we're, uh, what, October 1st today. Season is on the way. With season comes better weather. And this becomes the four or five months out of the year where I don't bitch miserably about the weather every morning. Uh, it becomes a much cooler, nicer place to be. We're not there yet. You know, it's not fantastic. Uh, but you can see signs of good things coming, and that's going to bring a little cheer to the air and cheer to my spirits and uh, keep everybody happy. Uh, obviously, in lieu of, well, not in lieu, because of coronavirus, uh, I'm still doing my morning uh, whiskey therapy, so you're going to have to bear with me on this. Uh, you know, the whiskey certainly doesn't make... Uh, uh, reviewing these cars any more coherent, but uh, we'll keep going. And the good news is, you know, with the whiskey, obviously I'm safe from the virus. The cigarettes probably don't hurt either. So I'm in good shape all around. And today I have something for the Alfistis. Uh, I'm not sure actually if that's how you say it, but I think it is. The, that's the group of nut jobs who loves Alfa Romeos to the point of obsession. Uh, frankly, if you're one of those guys, you're probably not into the spiders. You're going to be into some sort of more obscure Alfa that's not accessible to most of the common people. And uh, that's where the spider comes in, because it is. I mean, this is, uh, to many, many people out there, the car that they would think of when they hear Alfa Romeo. Certainly people of my generation, I imagine snowflakes have a different view altogether. They're probably thinking of something more modern. Uh, but if you remember, this car has been iconic. Look at the size of that cat. That's Peter's cat. It's like a friggin' ocelot. I saw it leaping after a bird this morning, uh, which is fine with me, by the way, if it wants to take out a bird, as long as it stays with the birds and doesn't come after me. I don't know what the name of that thing is. Probably... <clears throat> uh, yeah, I don't know. It's like a junkyard dog in cat form. There it goes trotting off. Anyway, back to the Alpha. If you remember, there was a movie, I think it was 67, The Graduate with Dustin Hoffman. He famously drove an Alfa Romeo Spider uh, Duetto, a beautiful car. And what's not as widely known is that that car was supplied by his uncle. Uh, for the movie, actually supplied three of them, and it was a new model at the time, and it was brilliant product placement, like Michael J. Fox drinking a Pepsi in Back to the Future. Uh, Max Hoffman, uh, Dustin's uncle, was one of the chief importer. I mean, the guy who brought the most incredible cars to America in the 50s. He was an Austrian guy responsible for bringing Porsche, the Speedster. The, uh, he, he, in fact... Uh, essentially convinced Mercedes to build the 300 SL Gullwing, taking a Le Mans car and making it for the street. Uh, Max Hoffman is a legend in the car world. And uh, who knew he had this little known nephew or, uh, you know, whatever the hell he was who made a couple of movies or something, guy named Dustin. Uh, but anyway, that car where uh, Dustin Hoffman was shagging a mother and daughter team uh, to everyone's delight, uh, featured uh, the first Alpha maybe to hit the big screen in a big way. And it cemented Alpha's iconic nature, even in American pop culture, even if Alpha's never really done particularly well in America. It's always struggled here, get around this tree. Uh, to go back to the birth of Alpha, you have to go back to the early 20th century, uh, 1910, I believe, when a group of investors uh, left a French concern named Dirac, uh, bought their factories, and started a company named Alpha. And of course, everything sounds great in Italian. Uh, I mean, as I point out, you could say a sentence like, you know, I took the camel poop and flung it at the wall. You say it in Italian, and it's going to sound beautiful. Alpha stands for Anomena. Uh, what the hell does it stand for? Anomena. Lombarda, Fabrica. <laughs> I have some brain is melting from the too much whiskey this morning. Anomena Lombarda Fabrica Automobili, uh, which uh, if you translate that to English, it means the anonymous Lombarda car company. You know, I mean, you really have to absolutely hand it to the Italians. They can take anything and make it sound good. Uh, and anonymous meant that the investors on the forms were essentially anonymous. It was just a class of, of corporation in Italy at the time. And uh, Lombarda Car Factory had, uh, you know, to do with where the car was being built. Uh, they ended up buying the factory from Dirac in Milan, and that became the headquarters of Alfa Romeo for many, many years. In 1915, a guy named Nicola Romero bought it. 
that uh, a real entrepreneur type, you know, cool cat, uh, just in time for World War One and to become sort of weapons baron. So he started building weapons for the Italian war effort, made a lot of money, and uh, when the war was over, started building sports cars. And of course, that's what Alpha became famous for. He also lent his last name to the Alpha name, and it became then Alpha Romeo, and the rest is history. Uh, that went on for a few years. Uh, in the 20s, they ran into financial trouble. Uh, they got taken over by the government after the crash in 29. Uh, Mussolini had come to power, by all accounts, a real genuine bastard, but they made Alpha sort of the national mark of pride and invested a lot of money in it, and Alpha started building some fantastic cars. Uh, back in 25, Alpha won the first uh, grand champion, you know, kind of the precursor to Formula One. Uh, they won the first uh, race, and uh, then uh, in 1950, they won the actual first Formula One race. They are the most winningest team, car, whatever you want to call it, in all of racing history. No company has won uh, more than Alfa Romeo, and that includes Porsche and some other incredible marks. So uh, you really got to hand it to them. They've, they've just been absolutely uh, terrific on the racing front. In fact, one of their first racing efforts in the early uh, 30s was, uh, it started with a driver, a young guy. You might have heard of him. His name was Enzo Ferrari. And then he raced for them, you know, with mixed success for a while. It turns out he was a much better manager than he was a driver. Not that he was a bad driver, but much better manager. And he went on to manage Alpha's team as an, as, and again, Enzo, this is a history of bastards. It really is. Mussolini and Ferrari. I mean, Ferrari's an amazing guy, but he's a tremendous bastard. So he had his own team, Scuderia Ferrari, and he managed Alpha's racing effort for them. And uh, of course, had great success doing it. Uh, that went on into the war. Of course, World War II happened. Uh, Alpha had to abandon cars for a while, and they got into building airplanes. Uh, that technology, where they were building the airplanes, helped them develop uh, a much more advanced, much more uh, interesting and forward-thinking engine, which, uh, in fact, uh, pioneered uh, the way most modern engines are built today. And that ended up in the first incarnation uh, of this Spider. That was a dual overhead cam four cylinder which came out in the 50s but we'll get into all that so uh, anyway so they kept going they started building great cars they started building you know terrific road going cars sports cars uh, there was alpha north and alpha south uh, you know two different locations alpha sud they called it not a beautiful italian name a rarity and they came up with a front drive transverse engine <clears throat> they almost beat the mini cooper to it but they didn't and uh, but anyway that car went on to do great things as well uh, but the Alpha North with the four-cylinder double overhead cam engine became the cars that people really think of when they think of Alfa Romeo. And uh, look at this thing. It's absolutely gorgeous design. Uh, it followed the Julia. Uh, which was uh, the, the first Spider was built by, uh, well, sorry, it was built by Pininfarina, or was built by Alpha, designed by Pininfarina, and uh, was considered to be an incredibly iconic car that created a whole class of cars. Uh, the Spider followed it, this car. Uh, it was called the Duetto then. That was a naming contest. It turns out there's a lot of naming contests in the car world. I didn't realize that until lately. And some Italian guy won it by coming out with the Duetto, but then it turned out Duetto was trademarked by some Norwegian bread company or something, so Alpha couldn't officially use it, uh, even if the model went on to be known as the Duetto for many years. Uh, went through a few different incarnations, and they built this car for 30 years. Came out in the 60s, and the last one, uh, eh, 93, 94, there's some debate. There were a few 94 models out there, uh, which is an absolutely incredible run. Incredible run. And you have to realize the Miata came out in 1990. 90, a car that's, uh, you know, sort of a, not just a direct competitor to this one, which was a 91 model, but was it was based on the Lotus Alain, which was a competition for this car 25, 30 years ago. So, you know, car magazines tested it against the Miata, this Alpha, and they said, ah, it's, you know, it's antiquated compared. Well, of course it friggin' is. The car was 30 years old at the time. I mean, Alpha was basically keeping it going uh, because it worked. It was selling a few. It was helping the brand. Uh, but to uh, compare it to, you know, a billion-dollar Mazda engineering front on the Miata wasn't entirely 
entirely fair at the time. Uh, it was considered actually sort of a luxury Miata, which also isn't entirely fair because I think it's much more proper to call it sort of a bargain Ferrari. I, I think as an Italian roadster, uh, that's the way this car uh, comes across. It's a joy to drive, it's beautifully well appointed, and it's almost a grand touring car more than a sporty handling roadster. Uh, it's got a solid live axle in the back, it's independent suspension in the front, you know, it's all great stuff, uh, but it does not have the same nippy, sort of bouncy feel that a Miata does, and uh, nor does it want it. Uh, this is something that a gentleman drives, and you know, <laughs> out to the country home or, uh, you know, around. Uh, uh, Vermont or, you know, somewhere where they love summer cars. So, uh, I tell you what I'm going to do real quick. I'm going to get the, t well, okay, I lied. I already did the video of the top up. I did that earlier this morning. Uh, you know, it just makes it easier that way. So I'm going to pause the video so I can insert that bit of the canvas soft top up and then we will, uh, get it, um, back down and go for a spin. Okay, here it is with the soft top up and in place. Uh, you can see it's a canvas top. Very nice, very simple, lovely, nice clear back window. Uh, very just, yeah, very much a roadster top. You know, two little clips at the front, a nice simple frame, and uh, just fling it back Miata style, or I guess Miata was flinging it back Alpha style. Uh, and it's uh, what you want, enough to keep the wind out, enough to keep the water out, and uh, wait through a rain or cold weather till you can get it back down and do what the car's supposed to do, which is riding around with the top down. So that's what we're going to do now and keep rolling. Okay, so here we go. Let's have a look inside the trunk. You know, 1991, when this car was built, was a very interesting year. Uh, you had some really fascinating stuff happening. Uh, little things like the dissolution of the Soviet Union, the end of Mikhail Gorbachev, and the beginning of Boris Yeltsin. Uh, you also had the Gulf War. Uh, you had Nirvana. They came out with their album, one of that thing where uh, they smell like teen spirit, which was actually named after deodorant. But anyway, nobody cares about that. So we'll get into this. Nice size trunk in an Alfa Romeo Spider. You'd be able to fit two sets of golf clubs in there. Uh, well, maybe. You know, might have to take the drivers out and put them on top. But uh, you get them in there. You see, this one still has this lovely little Alfa. Uh, what do you get? This is the thing that goes on the convertible soft top when it goes down to keep the window nice. I didn't put it on because, for one, Stalton, the detailer, neatly folded something and I didn't want to ruin the moment. So, uh, but anyway, that's there. These nice, uh, Alfa Romeo uh, floor mats, which uh, this badge, I tell you what, it went through more variations than Madonna. Uh, it started out, of course, with just Alfa. There was no Romeo. Uh, the uh, cross and the snake are symbols of Milan. Uh, it used to have these uh, little squiggly knots, which were the uh, symbols of the Savoy uh, dynasty, the, uh, you know, Italian uh, monarchy that ruled Italy up through the 50s. After that left uh, in the 50s, after, you know, Mus yeah, the guy supported Mussolini. That didn't work out. So they got rid of the king after that. He turned it over to a prime minister and they were done. At that point, the Savoy knots became little squiggly lines. It used to have Milano on the bottom to signify that it came from Milan. They got away with that. Uh, it had a little wreath going around it that signified their 1925 uh, victory in the Grand Prix Championship. Uh, there's like eight or nine different badges from Alfa Romeo. Uh, really goes through the ringer on that one. Uh, back here behind this neat little pull tab, uh, that's where you're going to find the uh, the tools, the jack, some extra lug nuts for the spare, and a, a nice place that Dalton didn't bother cleaning out very much. So uh, anyway, this would be a good spot to keep, uh, I don't know what you'd keep in there, maybe a disassembled Beretta shotgun, uh, something lovely anyway. And uh, you can hide whatever you need to hide from the state troopers, big bags of drugs or guns or, you know, whatever you're trying to run around with. Uh, here you've got the battery on the side and the back for weight distribution, Miata style. You got a true honest to God power antenna, which I like. And uh, all in all, just a great trunk. Really nice stuff. <clears throat> Have a look under the hood. Uh, the door handles, very much also like a Lotus Alon. And of course the Miata in 1990 had the same type of handles. 
Okay, famous, famous engine. Uh, this thing came out in the 50s. It was an absolute innovation at the time. Aluminum head, aluminum block, hemispherical uh, chambers, dual overhead cam, uh, dual chain timing, uh, uh, timing chain running around it, uh, putting out good, I mean, it, compared to the Porsche at the time, it was like an F-16 against a Sopwith Camel. I mean, this engine created the architecture uh, that would rule the small car world for the next 40 or 50 years. And they built this engine for the next 30 years. 1994 was the last that it showed up in, a, uh, in an Alpha vehicle. Uh, so truly one of the most iconic and legendary engines of all time. It's free revving. If you look under the hood of a 90 Miata, it looks almost the same. Under an MG, it looks the same and uh, virtually any modern Econobox Honda or whatnot uses this aluminum dual overhead cam engine. So kudos to Alpha for creating one of the most, uh, you know, copied and iconic engines of all time. Absolutely terrific. It runs nice and cool, has a beautifully thinned aluminum uh, sump on the bottom, the oil pan. Uh, it's just an epic, gorgeous, car porn style design. Uh, you know, factory uh, exhaust manifold header type thing beautifully tuned and run. Uh, it's it's as beautiful under the hood, this car, to a car guy as the outside is. Really, really gorgeous stuff. I <clears throat> love the big chrome headlights. The, you know, when uh, Pininfarina redesigned this car in uh, for 1991, I think this is the fourth generation Spider, and they really outdid themselves. The, uh, you know, coming up with five mile an hour bumpers that look good is not easy, and they did it. You see those big uh, push outs were sort of, Oh, they were molded into the design of the car with the alpha badge in the front and sort of the weird offset license plate bracket. Uh, they integrated the uh, the rocker panel ground effects, if you will, on the side, made them more uh, a part of the car. The bumper in the rear, same story. They did a nice little ducktail in the back. They wrapped around the taillights in a lovely way. Uh, they really did make this, I think, one of the best-looking spiders. You could argue that the uh, uh, the original Duetto with its round bow tail uh, was more beautiful, and yeah, probably, but uh, you really can't argue that they did a fine job upgrading this car uh, to look fantastic while still meeting all the stringent U.S. safety standards, including the airbag. Uh, this one has these beautiful 15-inch multi-hole alloy wheels, which look terrific. Really good-looking wheel on the car. The little pin and farina badge uh, in the back. It's just a, it really is a pretty, pretty car. Um, all right, I tell you what, I'm, I've got all my crap over here. I'm going to get that in the trunk right now. It's hiding behind the statue. She really should put a top on or something. I mean, for the love of God, nudity in your front yard. And you know what? I mean, real quick non sequitur. I didn't get into politics today because... Well, because you know why. There's just no point. It's ridiculous. Uh, I didn't get into all the stupid stuff that was happening. I did notice, I watched the debate the other night. I'm not going to bring it up. I promise. We're, I, okay, I brought it up. I'm not going to talk about it. Other than to say, it turns out we're going to pay Brazil... This was the one thing I took from an hour and a half of insanity. We're going to pay Brazil to not let their rainforest burn. I mean, you want to talk about setting a template for global extortion. I mean, if I were China, the first thing I would do is grab a panda and, and put a gun to its head and say, man, you guys better send some dough over or this panda gets it. It gets it. And, uh, you know, this is going to start this trend. The world's going to start paying countries to not do shit that we don't want them to do. So... All right, that's my little run of politics. I won't get into the rest of it. I know that was kind of a silly little point uh, of the whole thing, but it's the one I took from it. So I'm going to get my crap in the trunk, and then we're going to go for a ride. All right, tag on the back. We're in good shape. Love this little boot cover that it's got for the top. Very, very nice the way it fits in with these little tabs. Uh, that's probably the best Italian engineering I've seen in a very long time. Also, a little package shelf area back there to stick more Beretta shotguns. And uh, in the door pocket, you've got a nice place for uh, a Beretta pistol of some type to put in and have ready to go in case you need it. So all very lovely stuff. Uh, again, to meet uh, safety standards in the U.S. at the time, 
and they had to put an airbag in the car, which they did. Uh, also has the Alpha Snake and logo looking at you. Uh, they gave you these uh, oh, sort of techs and Alcantara seats. Uh, you know, over time it gets these little stringy things on them. Not much you can do about that, but very comfy, very sporty, and nice to sit in. So let's hop in and do that. Also, much better room inside than you would think. Uh, even a guy who's 6'1", 6'2", should be able to drive this car pretty comfortably. So traditionally, we put our key in over here, clutch in, hit the wipers with my, uh, hit the wipers with my arm, of course, because I'm retarded. And uh, let's uh, see what we got, get our e-brake down. Uh, so you've got this very unique sort of tall stacked instrument cluster. Uh, it's got full gauges. You've got your oil pressure. You see that there. You've got your voltmeter, uh, your fuel, your temp, your tack with the Alpha logo, and of course your miles per hour and the Jaeger uh, instrument. Uh, you know, being Italian, the speedometer seems to stick at 17 before going back down. Eh, what are you going to do? I'm just going to leave it that way. Uh, you can see just 39,000 miles on this thing. A lot of these cars are used for weekend fun, uh, so they really don't get put through the ringer and daily driven. I'm sure there's a few out there that do. And uh, there goes Peter and his uh, borrowed BMW. Maybe we can sneak out while the gate's still open takes forever for that thing. Uh, you got these very cool uh, vents. I've always liked these. They're quite simple. Ford copied those later on. Uh, in 86, Alpha bought, uh, I, that's hilarious, Alpha didn't buy anything in 86. Fiat ended up with Alpha. I, I don't know if they bought it from the government or if there was someone else in between, uh, but they've been uh, developing it ever since, along with uh, Chrysler then a few years later. And that's how Alpha ended up back in the United States making uh, Julia's and God help us SUVs. So, uh, I don't know. There's some talk that, um, you know, they may or may not keep going in America. They've always had problems here. Uh, I hope they do. Uh, you know that Quadrifoglio thing on the side, the four-leaf clover, three, uh, three-leaf clover anyway. Maybe it's four. I think it's four. Three. Doesn't matter. They have a clover on the side of the racing cars. That goes back to a guy in 1923 running in the uh, Targa Floria, the, the uh, very famous race. Uh, he had one on the side of his car as a good luck thing. And uh, a guy named Ugo something. And he won the race. Everything went great. Then the next year, he didn't have the thing on the side of the car. And he was killed in a horrific way. So ever since then, Alpha kept sticking him on the sides of all of their cars. And hopefully that wards off death. Uh, this one not being the, you know, if you will, the AMG version of the Alpha doesn't wear that badge. That's that's reserved. I don't think they ever made a spider with the Quadrifoglio setup, but if they did, it would wear that uh, clover on the side. Uh, anyway, very nice leather wrapped wheel with the Alpha logo, the uh, you know, whatever the hell you want to call it. It's just all very nice and proper. Feels good to the touch. Nice size. You got your vents. This thing has actual functioning air conditioning, which works good. Uh, very, very hard to believe, but it's true. You've got this weird sort of up into the dashboard. It reminds me of a Citroen Du Chevaux or something. Always felt that was strange about Alphas, but I admit when you're driving it, it feels quite natural and doesn't bother me, but what an odd placement for the shifter. Uh, you've got a uh, analog clock down there that's working. You've got all these neat buttons uh, to run the power windows and the hazards. you got an ashtray because we're Italian. We're smoking. Your power mirrors, a um, little car show plaque, and of course your e-brake there. Uh, so a very nice, simple, elegant dash layout uh, that works good. These big knee braces had to get added for uh, this generation to meet, uh, again, U.S. safety standards, but they did it in a nice, elegant way. I've got texts coming in. A bunch of animals. Sun visors, nice leather looking stuff, but I'm sure they're vinyl, uh, work great and uh, still look intact. So, lovely stuff all around. Let's go for a spin. And again, I, I mean, I'm going to admit it right off. A Miata gives you way more driving dynamics. I mean, it feels more cornerable, more malleable, more tracky than the Alpha does. The Alpha is a much older design, but the Alpha feels a hell of a lot more elegant and substantial than the Miata does. It's like a grand touring Miata. And you know, if you're a 60 year old guy uh, and you want to have a fun thing to go to the country club in or the Asian massage or the strip club or uh, you know, the gun range, wherever it is that you do go, uh, this is a much more elegant way to do it than a Miata. 
and your friends aren't going to make fun of you. So, uh, all right, well, I'm not going to run down this road with the sun on because it just makes everything miserable. So, uh, I'll wait till we get to the end and pick it back up again. Uh, if I see the woman with the hat, I'll pick up the camera.